Welcome back. I'm Brandon, the H Bar Bull, and I do some contract work for the H Bar Foundation. There's been some excitement over Helium Network's L1 selection process after it was assumed Solana had the job pretty much locked up. It's still a long shot, but today we welcome Greg Scullard, a developer advocate from Swirls Labs, who's part of the push for Helium to build on Hedera. Welcome, Greg. Hi, Brandon. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So, Greg, to start off, can you explain what Helium Network is and why there's this opportunity to put Hedera in the running as the L1 network for them to build on? Yeah, sure. So Helium is is really two things. Uh, first of all, it's a, a deployment of hotspots, uh, which people can acquire, install uh, into their homes or offices or, or wherever they want. Uh, and those hotspots provide a, a variety of radio services, uh, one of which is LoRaWAN, which is used by IoT devices to, uh, to basically broadcast information or, or share information with the rest of the world. Uh, and the idea there is that instead of it being operated or those hotspots being operated by large telecommunication companies, uh, anyone can uh, acquire one, set it up and, and attach itself to uh, to the Helium network. That in itself would be all, all, all well and good, but Helium wanted to build some economics around this and make it possible for people to earn some value uh, by sharing these hotspots or making those hotspots available. Um, so they've built a blockchain, uh, which is a, a layer one blockchain fit for purpose, uh, for the purpose of basically gathering uh, information from these hotspots that are up and running um, and to verify that they're alive and available um, and also uh, gathering witness reports from other nearby hotspots. Uh, that basically prove that the hotspot is indeed uh, available. And based on that, they distribute tokens to hotspot owners uh, as a means of payment or reward uh, for being available and serving the, the wider community of Helium customers. So I'd love to hear your explanation as to why Hedera is the best network for Helium to build on. But as I understand it, you can actually show us. Could you present this POC? <laughs> So yeah, so so before we jump into the demo, maybe the you know to explain the reason we're here is that Helium have been operating both this network of radio devices uh, as well as uh, as a layer one and and trying to develop this layer one from from scratch. Now, just operating the network of devices itself is hard enough. Uh, sure. Building a layer one is is very very difficult, as as we all know. Uh, so they've come to the realization that they should really focus on what their core business is and their core, the, the core reason for Helium being and delegate the, the work of operating and building the L1 to, uh, to specialist entities, special, you know, specialist um, L1 providers such as Solana and Hedera. Um, so uh, they're now sort of going through this process of figuring out which, uh, which L1 to use. Uh, and as, as you hinted, uh, Solana is very much uh, up there in the running. Uh, but we, we got sort of pinged by uh, Leo, one of the Helium community members, uh, who wanted to, uh, to sort of ask us, you know, whether Hedera was suitable for this. And uh, we put a hip together, we explained the architecture. And, you know, rather than just explain it in words, I decided to build a, a proof of concept, which I'm going to show you now. So, yeah, so with this proof of concept, what we're trying to show here is how Helium could implement uh, the architecture we described in the improvement proposal that we shared on the, the Helium GitHub. So we've got here uh, three hotspots at the moment. Uh, they're in different locations around the world, uh, London, Paris, and New York. And only London is uh, currently uh, broadcasting uh, its its beacon, its, its I'm alive message, essentially, which is uh, being broadcast to the Hedera consensus service, recorded as a transaction, uh, and we can see them streaming here. It is 18.21 uh, by my clock at the moment, and you'll, you'll see those messages continue to stream up uh, through the list there as, the, as London is, uh, is broadcasting. At the same time, we've also got some receipts for uh, London receiving tokens as a result of those messages being processed by a computer system that is analyzing all of those I'm alive messages from London and in return for those messages uh, is paying London uh, two tokens. 
Now we're paying two tokens to London. In this case, it's the way the demo is set up. This could all be changed um, simply for saying I'm alive. Uh, and this is, uh, this is all cool. So let's first of all, increase the, the speed at which uh, everybody is reporting from approximately every 10 seconds to uh, a lot more, a lot faster. Um, and what we've done also here for the purpose of the demo in order for it to be graphically uh, pleasing uh, is that we've made a day last 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and for each one of those epochs of 10 seconds, uh, we are looking for a minimum of one witness in order to pay the higher reward. And we're looking for a minimum of two beacons in order to pay the, the lo lower reward. Uh, so you can see here the, the beacons in blue. Uh, and when they turn purple is that they've been paid. And in green, we will see some witness reports as soon as I turn New York on. Uh, so New York will start broadcasting its I'm Alive messages uh, in a few seconds, uh, as well as receiving witness reports from London, which is uh, witnessing New York being alive. So as these are now streaming through the system, what we can see here is that earlier in time, uh, New York was paid two tokens. Why? Well, because it was being it was broadcasting, but it wasn't yet witnessed by London. Now that it is being witnessed by London, it is being paid four tokens. Okay. And it is very much the same here for London, where uh, we had some uh, payments for two tokens, which are now replaced by payments with four tokens. Yeah, I mean, if um, so, this is you know really what um, uh, what the demo stands for, uh, the, the the proof of concept at the moment. What I would like to do as well now is uh, basically import an existing hotspot. So let's say I've got a hotspot. Uh, and I'm going to put myself in New Delhi. This is my private key. Uh, now, you wouldn't input a private key into a web page normally. You know, this, is, this would be the key of the wallet associated with the hotspot. But in order for me to generate those reports on behalf of the hotspot uh, and send them as transactions to the Hedera Consensus Service, I need its private key. But in, in practice, you would only provide the, um, the public key. Sure. Um, and we're going to mint an NFT for New Delhi, uh, and I've decided a silver or a silver NFT. And NFT now has um, a, an NFT associated with its hotspots, and that we've just minted uh, for uh, for New Delhi. We've transferred it to uh, to the hotspots uh, wallet, and New Delhi is now also broadcasting uh, reports and witnessing uh, others. So. Uh, so yeah, and you know this is using the same uh, ED two five five nine key two five five one nine key as Helium are currently using. So uh, hotspot uh, owners could very easily transfer uh, or use their, their existing wallets on on Hedera. One other feature uh, which uh, which we've built into the demo here is splitting the payments uh, of uh, tokens. So let's say you and I, Brandon, set up a hotspot, and because the uh, the purchase price is relatively uh, is relatively high or too high for you know either of us to buy by ourselves, uh, we decide to you know uh, go in halves. Um, and what we'd like to do is we'd like for the system to pay me half of the the rewards and you half of the rewards whenever they're paid. Um, and if I uh, if I turn Paris on. Uh, then this is this is exactly what will happen. The two wallets associated with the Paris hotspot will each receive half of the um, half of the payments. There we go. I think that's uh, that pretty much covers the demo. Of course, you know all of this uh, is uh, here on my screen. If we look at Hashscan, which is um, one of the Hedera Ex explorers. Um, you can look for yourself uh, on this particular topic ID um, after watching this video. Um, if you look at around this time, uh, well, this is GMT plus two. So look at the time corresponding to, to your time zone. Uh, but you can basically see uh, all of those reports being sent to this particular topic on, on the Hedera Consensus Service. And some of them are just a I'm alive report. Others are uh, a witness report, basically saying, um, you know, hotspot ID two is witnessing hotspot ID one. 
Um, yeah, and this is on our test net, so you can uh, you can all see it for yourselves. Perfect. It really seems like it highlights the power of Hedera, and you know this is exactly what HCS was designed for. This is you know built for a purpose use case, or it seems like that to me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, this is really all about broadcasting data to say um, either I'm alive or I, I'm witnessing uh, another hotspot that it's uh, that, that is alive, and being able to process this data and turn it into uh, into reward payments. Now, the the nice thing about this solution is that the hotspots are writing their um, witness and and beacon reports to the Hedera network. Uh, there is no intermediary catching them to process them to then make payments. Mm -hmm. They are first recorded on Hedera. True. They are then processed by an intermediary. And this could actually be intermediaries. So we could have three or four of those systems essentially uh, working together to agree upon payments. So we're decentralizing the processing and the uh, the approval of payments to multiple uh, oracles, as they're called, uh, so we could easily have two, three or four of those uh, having to agree with each other that, um, that the payments have to be made. Um, and we can also provide the software uh, that makes the calculations in a read-only manner to anyone who wants to run it so that they can see for themselves, uh, you know, given a, a hotspot ID uh, or given a, a particular period of time, they could reprocess all the messages and they could check that those that are effectively making the payments, the, the treasury for the token making the payments, are making the correct payments. So there are checks and balances that are enabled there uh, by virtue of validators, you know, validating that the people making the decisions are making the right decisions. So it truly decentralizes the whole process rather than merely counting uh, tokens on the ledger. Very interesting. Switching gears a little bit, how can the community help the effort for Helium to build on Hedera? Well, really, uh, and I think the community generally has done a, a very good job of, you know, uh, trying to to push the, the the benefits of Hedera to to the Helium community and to the Helium project as a whole. Um, I think technically Hedera has all the all the right assets, um, and really. Um, what what this is showing is is true decentralization of the entire end to end process at uh, minimal cost. I think it would cost eight cents for a hotspot to beacon all year, um, and these are fixed prices in US dollars. It will not go up if H bar goes up. It will always be eight cents. The other thing that um, I think the community uh, ought to get behind is is this notion of leaderless networks. Uh, Hedera is a leaderless network, and we've seen a lot of uh, communication around things like the Nakamoto coefficients that's meant to determine how decentralized uh, a system is. It turns out that if you're a leader-based system, anyone who knows and anyone who's a validator in a leader-based system, which the majority of proof-of-stake networks are, except Hedera, um, if a validator is able to know, and, and they typically do know who the validator is, they're able to attack this validator and the validator is, pro is producing blocks. So um, there's a strong, you know, there's a possibility uh, that at some point in the future, uh, we will see DDoS attacks on those leaders because uh, they're the easiest way to attack uh, these proof of stake blockchains. And it really doesn't matter where the stake is, how many, how many nodes own how much stake. It is the leader at that point in time that is crafting the block. And if that leader is not able to do that, then there is no consensus. And the, the blockchain may switch to a different leader. And uh, then the validator that's been uh, malicious will just target his DDoS attack to the new leader and continue until uh, they run out of DDoS funds uh, or, or, or otherwise. So I, I think, you know, today, these kind of attacks are probably not high on anyone's agenda because no, none of the blockchains today, none of the, none of the DLTs uh, carry sufficient value for those types of attacks to be worthwhile. Um, so maybe uh, there is a, you know, a thought process along the lines of this is a problem for later. 
But my concern is that when uh, transactions per second are dependent on this leader-based mechanism um, and that leader-based mechanism is fixed, well, what of TPS then? Um, you know, if that halves or divides your potential throughput by 10, then all of those use cases that are dependent on very high throughput suddenly no longer have it because of the need of this extra security. Sure. Hedera was built with security in mind first. It happens to be fast as well and no compromise there. So I, I think the, the community could do a great job there in, in getting behind this as a principle. I think this would do, you know, this would do very well to, uh, to put Hedera forwards. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for the explanation. And, and to the community out there, we're going to be holding a Twitter space in a few hours on the Helium developments. Um, if you have any questions, it'll be at 5 p.m. Eastern. And thanks again, Greg, not just for this effort, but for all you do in the space. My pleasure, Brandon. I love doing what I do. So, uh, in fact, my wife usually uh, wonders whether this is work or fun. Uh, and I think it's fun. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. And I'll see you in a few hours in that Twitter space. Yeah. Catch you later. Bye-bye.